Hi, Jennifer LeClaire here. I want to share with you an intense experience I had in the realm of the seer. I was in a hotel room in Dallas. It was the last day of the Global Prophet Summit. I was speaking and, and I was uh, just getting prepared in the hotel room to go to the airport. And I, I felt led to do a, a Facebook live video in which I called for the seers to arise. And I began to teach on the seers anointing. Many of you may have seen that Facebook live video. And at the end of the video, I, I began to, to feel an anointing come upon me. I actually put my head down. I actually uh, was overtaken by the Holy Spirit, by the anointing. And I felt a new charge, a new mandate, uh, a new mission to raise up seeing people, seers and seeing people. And, and I want to give you an opportunity to take part of some of the teaching that I did the next day when I came home. It was powerful. In these next uh, 20, 30 minutes, you're going to see uh, some straight up teaching on the seer's anointing. You're going to see uh, an impartation take place, an activation. You're going to see people begin to prophesy out of what they see. It is amazing what the Lord did in this service. I want you to be a part of this. If you are hungry for more, after this teaching, you can go to School of the Spirit TV. I've launched a School of the Seers, and I want to bless you with this broadcast, but if this just whets your appetite, if you know that you've got a call, if you know that you need to get equipped, if you know there's more for you, you're hungry for it, I want you to go to schoolofthespirit.tv and sign up for the School of the Seers. Check this out. I hope you enjoy it. I'll be right back with you in a few minutes. So I'm going to teach you for a few minutes, and I want to... I want to activate this. Some of you, this gift is laying dormant on the inside of you. I mean, when the Holy Spirit comes, he brings all of his gifts. It's kind of like the fruit of the Spirit. See, the fruit of the Spirit is in you in seed form. Did you know that? But you have to water that thing so that it'll grow. you got to pluck up some weeds so it stays pure. Well, it's the same thing with the gifts of the Spirit. They're all in you. Now, they move through you according to the will, of the, the will of the Lord. You cannot make yourself see. You cannot make yourself see, but you can yield to his desire to show you things. And if we're uneducated about a thing, if we don't know about a thing, if we're ignorant to a thing, we can't have faith for a thing. And some people just fall into the seer realm. They don't even know what's happening. Others, they crave to see, but they don't have the faith for it because they've never been taught and they've never been activated. They've never received an impartation. So that's what I want to do today. The biggest thing I, biggest question I get, is because back in the Old Testament, seers and prophets, uh, it, it, the term was almost used interchangeably. And so people don't understand. They say, Samuel, you know, the, the seer who was formerly called a prophet. And so there's all this confusion in the body of Christ. And, and we have to go and look at what the word says. The best way that I can, that I can put it is this. All seers are prophets. But not all prophets are seers. Now, all prophets will have a dimension of seeing. And all seers will have a dimension of hearing because everybody hears the voice of God. But it's, it's, it's a matter of the dominant gift, the dominant expression of the gift. How many know that no two prophets are alike? You look at Moses. You look at Elijah. You look at Zechariah. They all flowed differently. They moved differently. They had a different uh, an unction, a different expression of their ministry. And so the seer, there's the same way with seers. There, there's different functions and flows of the seers. I can't get into that level of detail today for sake of time, but we need to stop putting each other in a box. We need to stop saying, well, all seers do. I, I found a list on the internet, praise God. I ticked off all the boxes and I'm a seer, hallelujah. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Tick, tick, tick boxes can be helpful, but they can also be harmful. You don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. You don't have to be a seer to see. Acts 2 and 17, in the last days. Somebody say, we're in the last days. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. So what is a seer? Well, the, the simplest definition, one who sees. A seer is one who sees. Look it up in the dictionary. It's one who sees. When you look at the Hebrew, and the Hebrew word, one of the Hebrew words is raha. And it means to see. And I want to contrast this with a prophet so that you clearly see the difference between these two offices. This, I believe the seer is an office. It's not mentioned in the five I believe it falls under the category of the prophet. 
It's that same broad gift, but it means to see, look, view, to realize, know, consider, to be selected. How many know God's got to select you to be a seer? You can't make yourself a seer any more than you can make yourself a, a car. God's got to make you who he wants to make you. It means to become visible, to appear, to show oneself, to be seen, to cause to see, to look at each other. Then there's also the word roe, which means a seer and a vision. Then there's the word chosen, which means seer. So there's different words for seer. One who receives a communication from God with a possible focus that the message had a visual component. And then the chaza, the Hebrew word chaza means to see, to look, to observe, to gaze. How many know when you have an open vision? How many have ever had an open vision? When you have an open vision, you're gazing. You're mesmerized by the thing. You're gazing. And the Lord showed me that the enemy had caused some to be, I mean, yes, the enemy had caused some to be mesmerized by the things he showed them, almost enthralled, almost like a magnet, almost like that's why you don't want to see anymore because the, the enemy caused you to see things that you did not want to see. But the Lord's going to redeem that today. As a matter of fact, he already has for the ones that came forward. Amen. It means to gaze, by extension, to choose one thing or another, to have visions, to prophesy. Here's the thing. Let me give you a real practical example. You wouldn't necessarily, let's say there's a, the scene of a car accident. And there's, a, there's somebody that runs out and they, and they see the person lying out there and they, and they begin to, to do CPR. And they save their life and they begin to bandage the wound before the ambulance shows up. Well, that person does not have to be a doctor to perform CPR and bandage a wound, right? In the same way, you don't have to be a seer to see in the spirit. You don't have to be a seer. The difference is though a doctor, an actual doctor is licensed by the American Medical Association and has taken an oath to perform his duty. A seer, by way of comparison, is licensed or, let me put it another way, ordained, commissioned, authorized by God and takes an oath per se, to stand in that office and to perform the functions and duties of the calling. The Bible says, Paul the Apostle said that you are to walk worthy of your vocation. What is a vocation? It's a full-time job. You wouldn't cut your hobby is not your vocation, right? Your part-time job is not your vocation. That extra side job you got to make money for the holidays, that's not your vocation. That's just a little something, something you're doing on the side to make a little extra money. A seer is one who sees consistently. A seer is one who sees as the dominant expression of the gift. It does not mean that the seer will not, uh, will not hear. Seers hear. But most of the time, when it comes to unctions to be shared externally, things the Lord wants you to share with others, most of the time, the picture or the vision or the dream comes, and then the word of the Lord comes unto them saying afterwards. And I can show you that scripture. I don't know how deep I can get in this. That's why I'm doing the school of, of school of the seers because it just is so deep and so rich. What is a prophet? One who utters divinely inspired revelations. One who utters divinely inspired revelations. See, the, the difference between the, the seer is the seer is seeing, the prophet utters. The seer sees, the prophet utters. The prophet, it means it's nabi. A Navi prophet. To prophesy, to speak as a prophet, to prophesy has its focus on encouraging or restoring covenant faithfulness. The telling of future events encourages obedience or warns against disobedience. Then there's also the word nataf, to pour down, gently fall, drip words, to preach or prophesy. Try the seer speaks about that which he or she sees. The prophet just hears it. It doesn't mean the prophet can never have a dream that the prophet can never see, but it's the dominant flow of the gift. Are you getting it? So you know you all understand the difference between a seer and a prophet? This is a, I get this question almost every day. So seers see their revelations. Prophets hear their revelations. Prophets can see, but they hear more consistently and see on occasion the dominant gift is hearing. That's a little seer right there. I prayed for that one this morning. 
Hallelujah. That's a little seer right there. Seers hear, but they usually hear, see before they hear. So there was lots of seers in the Bible. I studied them all. I'm not going to share it all with you, but there's seer after seer after seer after seer uh, in the Bible. Uh, we see all these names, Samuel, Gad, Zadok, the priest. But let's talk about some of the functions of seers. The functions. See, because when we expect a seer to act like a prophet, like a Nabi prophet, then many times we'll reject the revelation of the seer because it's coming through a channel or a mode of communication that we don't like or we're not comfortable with. By the same token, when we expect the prophet to act like a seer, we're putting a demand on a gift that does not exist. And here's the thing, anytime you, I can see your eye, anytime you expect someone to act or behave or operate in a way that they cannot, the outcome tends to be abuse. And the reason why seers have come up under, one of the reasons why seers have come up under such rejection, persecution, and abuse is because the expression of their gift is not familiar to most pastors. Even if they do understand the prophet, the seer is like a whole other ball of wax. Why? Because the seer is always seeing this and that in the spirit. And, and we think about the revelations that, that John had. Think about the things that Ezekiel saw. Come on. Think about what Zechariah did. If you've ever read these Bibles, this stuff's like wild. You go to the pastor and say, I had a dream, and there were two women carrying a, two winged creatures carrying a basket, and there was a wheel within a wheel, and then there were these bones, and I saw them, and they came together, and I prophesied. I mean, your pastor would be like, what? <laughs> they might enjoy the, thus saith the Lord, pastor, your church is going to double in size in the next six months. Hallelujah! They like that. But the seer comes with this deep revelation. About a, a man with a face like a, like a lion and all these things. And like, ah, I don't know. Because we've conditioned, listen, we've conditioned the church for this feel-good Nabi prophet stuff. You're going to get a new car, praise God. You're going to have five babies. You're getting a million dollars. We've conditioned the church to receive from the prophet, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me stuff. Where the seer will see blessings. But many, many, many times, one of the main functions of a seer is the warning. So functions of a seer. Seers operate more in the visual realm. I mentioned that already. Seers warn. 2 Kings 17, 13. Let me give you a scripture for that. 2 Kings 17, 13. The Lord in this verse distinguishes clearly between the prophet and the seer. But they both operate in warnings, but they warn differently. Here, here's the scripture. 2 Kings 17, 13. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah. By all of his prophets, every seer saying, turn from your evil ways and keep my, my commandments and my statutes according to that which I commanded your fathers and which by you I sent my servants, the prophets. Prophets have a warning ministry, but it's typically based on what they hear. Seers have a warning ministry marked by what they see. Number three, seers often advise those in authority. They often advise those in authority. Like I said, David had seers around him. He made sure he kept seers around. As a matter of fact, when he, when, he left, uh, when he left the palace because Absalom had, uh, in, had, had, had launched an insurrection and a rebellion against him, Zadok the priest went with David. And he said to Zadok the priest, are you not a seer? Go back then into Absalom's camp and see what he does. In other words, he trusted him. That was one of his seers. And he knew that he would see in the spirit and in the natural. So kings in the Old Testament, they had seers. They had prophets and they had seers. They're different functions, different gifts. Second Chronicles 33 and 18. Now the rest of the acts of the king Manasseh, his, pr his prayer to his God, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord, indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. See, these seers spoke to him in the name of the Lord. What did they speak to him? What they saw. Not what they heard, what they saw. Or what they heard after they saw. You got it? Second Samuel 24 and 11. Now when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying... And so I believe that some, some, just like you can have an apostle prophet, you can have a hyphenated gift, you know. You can have a seer prophet or a prophet seer. You can walk in both. Usually, one of the gifts is dominant. Usually. 
But there are, there are those who just seem to flow between one side and the other. And are you a prophet or you seer? I don't know. I see things. I know things. I hear things. I say things. I cast out devils. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 See, the prophet will hear the Lord say, there's a spirit of fear on that one. The seer will many times see the fear. It's just a different expression. It's a different expression. Number four, I like this one. Seers chronicle what the Lord shows them. Second Chronicles 33 and 19. Uh, his prayer, this is King Manasseh, and how his God was moved by his entreaty, as well as all his sins and unfaithfulness, and the sites where he built high places and set up Asherah poles and idols before he humbled himself, are these all, all, all these are written in the records of the seers. It's a, take a hint from that now. Seers, it's very important that you write down what the Lord shows you. What if Zechariah hadn't written down what the Lord showed him? What if Ezekiel hadn't written down? What if John hadn't written down what the Lord showed We must write these things down. You have no idea who that's going to, to be needed for, who it's going to bless. Here's, here's, it's the same with prophets, but seers, see, you have a part. And when you get together with other seers, because there's like a seer language. There's like a seer code, you know. I can see a seer from a mile away. Hallelujah. There's a seer code. I can see, I know intercessors from a mile away. I can tell. Listen, you've got to write it down because you might have this part. Then when you're sharing with your other seer friends, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I saw this part. Oh, my gosh, it's the same thing. And you get so excited. Y'all ever do that? Is that just me? Is that like a geeky prophetic thing to do? Seers are spokesmen for God, just like prophets are. Now, you don't have to be a seer to see. I've said that over and over. I want, you to, I want to drill that in your head. God wants you to see. You just need to tap into the seer anointing. I just wanted to cut in for just a moment here. I'm sure this is stirring your spirit. I'm sure you're learning things. Things are being confirmed to you. I'm sure that you are uh, ready to see the rest of this. I want to remind you that if you are in to this broadcast. If you're just watching with an intensity, with a knowing on the inside of you that you are called to see. Like I said in the teaching, you don't have to be a seer to have a seeing anointing. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. You can see. I want to invite you to be part of the School of the Seers, schoolofthespirit.tv. I'll let you get back to the teaching now. I'll be back with a closing prayer in just a moment. Many times, listen, when the Lord asks, what do you see? He's trying to activate your spiritual vision. The Lord never asks you a question that he doesn't know the answer to. He's, he doesn't need your advice, your counsel, your help. He's asking you a question to open your eyes. When he says, what do you see? Has, any, has anybody ever had the Lord ask them that question? You have? You have? You have? When he asks you that, yeah, you have too. When he asks you that question, he's try, he wants you to see something. He's showing you something. He's asking you to hone in, to focus, to set aside whatever else you're doing. How many of you can quench the Spirit of God? You can choose not to see. You can choose not to hear. You can choose not to say. You can choose not to do. You can choose not to pray. You can choose. You can choose. What do you see? He's trying to activate your spiritual vision. Jeremiah 1 and 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah... What do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you, so you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Verse 13, and the word of the Lord came to me a second time. Now, Jeremiah was not a seer. That wasn't his primary function. Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to me a second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For I be, for behold, I am calling all the families and the kings of the north. Da, 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 da. So he was showing him something before he gave him the word of the Lord. He wanted him to see it. We need to de demystify this gift because the Lord has made it very, very clear to me that you know, he doesn't need anybody, but he chooses to work through us, right? He wants to see the seers rise. He wants to see the seers take their rightful places. He wants to see this happen, but you've got to have permission. 
So today I give you permission to see again. I give you permission by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus to express your gift without fear, without timidity, without reservation. I'm telling you, God is going to unlock something in you today. He's calling for seers and seeing people to arise. The church needs to accept the seers. I want to lay hands that those also who have the seer anointing that are on my team. We want to lay hands on you. So you can't impart something that you don't have. Now you all have... Technically, you, you have an anointing. The Holy Spirit abides in you. But if you're not operating in something, it's hard to release to somebody else. If the dam is, is holding up your gift, it's kind of hard to, you know, impart it to somebody else. So those on my team who are operating in the seer gift, I'm going to ask them to pray. So it might, it might take a little while. So you might have to just pray with us and, 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 and contend. I'm not, we're not going to labor long. Pray for each person 10 minutes. We're going to do it quickly. How I many you know it doesn't take long? To receive an impartation. Amen. You're going to receive according to your faith. I have the faith for it. The Lord told me yesterday. I mean, he didn't tell me, but I had a... He told me this morning that he's called me to raise up a generation of seers. But when that happened yesterday on, on the in the hotel, I rarely had something hit me that I actually put my head down on the Facebook Live because I was overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit. I, but I have the faith for it, and I believe I've got an anointing to impart... And so that anointing that came on me, it's not for me. I believe it was to release to you. And I believe I'm going to be walking in a higher measure of that. And I believe that we're going to have a church full of seers and prophets. Amen. Now, impartation, let me say a word about impartation. Impartation, when Moses' father-in-law came to him, he said, you've got way too many people to judge. Find 70 elders and lay hands on them. And impart to them a portion of the spirit that is upon you. And Paul said to Timothy to stir up the gift on the inside of you that you receive through the what? The laying on of my hands. And we see the healing anointed, anointing imparted through the laying on of hands. So there is an impartation through the laying on. It's one of the doctrines of Christ in Hebrews, the laying on of hands. So that's what we're going to do. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. That you are here to impart, to confirm, to unlock, to activate, to accelerate the seer anointing on the inside of your people. I thank you, Lord, that as we lay hands upon these ones, God, they will receive a new measure of the gift, the anointing that already resides on the inside of them. It will be unlocked. It will rise. It will grow. It will move. It will be visible. In Jesus' name. God, you've been thankful to pray it through to the end, to 
see it through to the end. Not just to pray one time, says God. Not just to pray two times, says God. But to even continue praying, says the Lord, when the enemy has come to try to blur your vision. To even continue praying, says God, when the enemy has come to put blinders on you so that you could not see to the right or to the left. When it felt like everything was going dark, the Lord said, my daughter, I have called you to continue down this path. And it's a path of sacrifice. And it's a path of, 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 of not of self-seeking, but of self-giving, says God. But you've seen in part and you've known in part. The Lord says, daughter, I'm about to show you things ahead that are going to blow your mind. And you will be faithful to stand and pray. And you have, uh, you, have, you have been one. And you will continue to be one. Who I will lift up and exalt because you've humbled yourself. So in the name of Jesus, I say a double portion, a double portion. Wait, 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 a double portion of Elisha's anointing. Elisha got a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Here comes a double portion of the Elisha anointing. Because I know somebody's seeing something. Who's seeing something? Come here, come here, come here, come here. I know that impartation is real. I know that God is here. What do you see? When you first started praying, there was doves all throughout the building. And there was a Whoa! Here. Come on! And the dove is a symbol of? Come on! Let me say, take your shoes off with this one. 
what I saw was angels. I saw two angels from the right and from the left, and they're just draping this whole atmosphere. He said, I am going to release my glory in this place. He said, I am going to release my glory in this place. Awakening place is going to be bigger than you've ever dreamed. You've seen it, but it's going farther. He said, I'm extending the life and the wisdom. Listen, before we end this broadcast, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for that activation even now. Many of you are already operating in this anointing. Let me tell you something about the anointing. Let me tell you something about the gifts of the Spirit. You need to school your gift. You've got to keep pressing. You've got to keep studying. You know, even doctors, attorneys, they have to go back for what they call continuing education. We don't know what we don't know. There is always more to learn. There is always more to catch in the Spirit. I want to invite you to go to School of the Spirit dot tv join up hook up with me let me teach you you know there's no distance in the spirit you can take this broadcast on this school online you can take it in person in south florida whatever suits your schedule it's on demand i want to pray for you i want to remind you though real quick if you are a member of the ignite network ignitenow.org you get a 15 percent discount on this school it's already extremely affordable i've made this very affordable so that Everyone who wants to take it, not just needs to take it, but wants to take it, can take it. You can get more details at schoolofthespirit.tv. You can get your Ignite Network discount by joining Ignite at ignitenow.org. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the seer. I release a measure of that anointing even now. I thank you, Lord, that those who are watching can catch this by faith, grab it, begin to exercise the gift that you've given them. Stir it up, God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for all those listening to the sound of my voice. Give them a hunger to press in to the gifts of the Spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. I hope this blessed you. Let me know. Jennifer LeClaire is signing off from the Awakening House of Prayer.